Well, good afternoon. We are at the Valley View Campground at the LBJ Grasslands. And you're probably wondering, what is this crazy getup? Wilderness search and rescue is inherently dangerous. Those dangers come in both two and four-legged varieties. So it's often necessary for me to max out my defensive loadout and carry both a rifle and a pistol. Well, that makes me heavier than I'm normally used to, and it changes my balance. So I have to uh, work out in this configuration on a regular basis. One of the endurance exercises I really like is something I've called day and night. So I came out here this afternoon at 1330, got kitted out, went out and did a two and a half hour exercise with full defensive loadout. It was a loop that I'd never done before, but from a navigation standpoint, even without map, compass, or GPS, it was still manageable. The real test there was the terrain. There were about four segments that honestly were pretty brutal. After a rest interval, go out, do a one and a half hour area search. Rest interval, do a one hour area search. The final part of this exercise is at night. Since I'm going to be out at night, I'm going to take this as an opportunity to run a second test on the Night Corps EDC-27. A lot of people have expressed concerns about the uh, endurance of the battery. You know, what does it look like in uh, you know, a more wide open environment? Well, I'm going to go out and do yet another loop. It's one I've done before. Navigation should not be that much of a challenge, but there's a lot of wide open areas. And I'm going to use the EDC-27 in lieu of a headlamp. I will, of course, have my normal headlamp on, but I'm going to use the EDC-27 in both medium and high modes, maybe with some brief burst in turbo. And I'll try to answer the questions of if you get jammed up and you find yourself out at night, that's the only light you have. Can you really count on it in a wilderness environment? And if so, for how long? Well, let the sun go down. We'll get out there and find out. This is our start time. We still have a little bit of uh, sunlight on the horizon, but it's uh, starting to get dark really fast. I think it's always good to look at lights in a variety of different circumstances. and. That uh, progression of sunset through twilight is one of them. I've got my headlamp on. Now I'm going to turn the night core on in medium. Get the headlamp off. So there is our initial display in medium, and we are starting the test now. So we're about eight, nine minutes into the exercise. I just wanted to show you what uh, medium looks like in a more wide open setting. Again, very good for a just a path following mode. But you get out here in the, in the big bad wilderness, so to speak, and then you're kind of looking at the uh, outline of those trees and you realize there's a lot out there that I'm not seeing. Okay, so I just went up into high. So high is clearly the mode if you want really good downrange situational awareness. So I'm going to drop back into uh, medium for a while. I'll be switching back and forth between the two all night just uh, based on terrain and uh, evolving conditions, and we'll see how things go. I've been running high about six, seven minutes straight. Just wanted to show you this view over a small pond. I'm going to try to alternate about eight to ten minutes in each mode. Try to mix the run times as evenly as possible between the two. But that is a high looking over a typical wilderness pond.
So we're back in medium. It's a little bit darker now. And I'm making my way down some uh, steeper, rocky terrain. This is always difficult to do while you're filming at the same time. And I'm carrying a rifle tonight. Oh boy, lots of fun. Check down in this area. All right, that's a pretty good test in medium. Time to move on. I'm about midway through an interval on high, coming through this kind of shoot of trees. There's actually another pond off to my left, so a uh, very good mode for situational awareness, seeing if there's anything down there on the other side, any eye shine. Of course, always regularly turn around, check your six. And here we move on forward. Headlamp on so I can show you the time. I'm in uh, medium right now, so there's what it looks like with my headlamp. You can see I'm on a road. What I did is I took the orange trail all the way to where it hooked up with the blue, then went way down the orange to the Chisholm Gate, which is this way. Now I'm working my way up the road till I hit the Todra gates, then I'll go back in and pick up the orange and go in along the same route I came in. This should uh, chew up a lot more time. All right, remember this? Yeah, we're headed back the other way now. We came through before, I was in medium, now we're in high, going back the other way. So that, uh, that cut over and loop through the Chisholm Gate and back up is something I'd never done before. I wanted to give it a try. I guess you could argue doing it for the first time at night may not be the most advisable, but uh, I was able to take advantage of a lot of uh, familiarity with the area. So here we are in high. We're going to work our way back up this path again. Apologize for the filming. I'm watching my footing, not the camera. Okay, first of all, time update. And we are officially game over. So, uh, mixing medium high. I guess I got pretty close to an hour and a half. The high is the real uh, burn down, so that's the one you have to watch. If I'd spent more time on medium, I would have gotten more longevity, but uh, that was the data point that I was looking for based on a 50-50 uh, split, so I'm gonna head on back into Valley View, take the short route back, and uh, that will wrap it up for tonight. So uh, as always, until the next review, Thank you very much for your time, and thank you for watching the video.